is Matt Sale. I'm a park ranger with Prince William County Department of Parks and Recreation. As a park ranger, I am responsible for patrolling over 4,000 acres of parkland, including 50 miles of trails and two water parks. The ranger division's objective is to provide a presence in the parks to deter unwanted activities such as vandalism, gang graffiti, and alcohol and drug violations. Rangers enforce Code 17 pertaining to county rules and regulations and issue forbid trespass notices when warranted. Rangers patrol from 8 in the morning until midnight on a daily basis performing safety and security inspections while securing parks. The Ranger Division works closely with local law enforcement agencies and fire department to serve the citizens of Prince William County, including participating in community outreach events like National Night Out and Trunk or Treat. The Rangers are also involved with environmental education and assist with teaching science in the park to kids from local schools as well. With a small team of 16 park rangers, I am afforded an ongoing sustainment review with Chief Dawson. Chief Dawson is a graduate of LPO and is currently a volunteer instructor. He utilizes LPO's concepts and leading by example to reinvigorate my motivation and I consider myself an exemplary follower. Chief Dawson utilizes motivation through job design theory, employing vertical loading. This approach adds new responsibilities to me, such as encouraging me to take on new assignments like attending LPO, sharing on-call duties for alarm activations through vector services, being on interview panel for hiring new part-time rangers, and training new part rangers. When Chief Dawson applied expectancy theory of motivation to encourage the division to write more FTNs at a rock quarry which posed an extreme hazard, I knew I was competent at writing FTNs, expectancy. I believed that if I achieved a certain level of performance, I would receive an award, instrumentality. I believed the reward had value and was something I wanted. Balance. Motivation is expectancy times instrumentality times value. I did receive the reward for writing the most forbid trespass notices at Silver Lake. The recognition reinforced my motivation. Being able to work so closely with my supervisor, I feel that he is clear with his expectations and with the goals for his employees individually as well as departmentally. Our ability to have open communication and to give and receive feedback is a unique feature of our organization. Ideally, this type of organizational structure would be beneficial for all departments. An officer transition and sustainment review program would clarify expectations and work towards goal setting. This would help ensure measures are taken in a large department to motivate new officers and tenured officers alike. Hi, right, today here we're at Noakesville Park and we're going to talk some science in the park with Christian. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Come on over here. What kind of question do you got for me today? How do you tell the difference between a male and a female turkey? That's a good question. You know what, when they're standing way off in a field, which is probably how most people have seen turkeys, it's hard to tell the difference. But if you get close enough, you're going to see that the gobblers are usually bigger and their feathers are darker and they have an iridescent glow to them. The male gobblers generally have a beard too, which so that's how you tell the difference between a male and a female turkey. The, the female's called a hen and the male's called a gobbler. So how about deer? Do you do you see many deer around in your in your travels? Not too many. Not maybe, too many. Yeah. Maybe some though, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, a lot of people don't realize that the deer have antlers. The bucks have antlers, and the does generally don't. So the bucks have small antlers when they're when they're young, and the older they get, their antlers generally get bigger. That's probably about a one-year-old deer. This would be like a, a two-year-old deer. And by the way, these antlers fall off every year and it's called shedding. And uh, the antlers are actually gnawed on by rodents, if you look, because they've got minerals in them. That's why if you walk around, you won't find too many. This deer is an older deer, as you can tell by the thickness of the antlers. He probably was four or five years old, probably died of natural causes. We, we found that in the woods. Well, these are fox squirrels. These are what's called a Delmarva fox squirrel. They live basically up in the Shenandoah Valley and up in the mountains of Virginia. Um, we don't have too many fox squirrels around here, but we have what's called a common gray squirrel. Gray squirrels are usually pretty active this time of year. They're gathering nuts and uh, storing them away, and, and uh, on real cold, nasty days, you won't see too many squirrels. They're kind of going to a little bit of a dormancy and hibernate. And, uh, but on a nice day like today, if you go out, you'll see lots of squirrels running around. So these are fox squirrels. How about over here, Christian? What do you think? Um, have you ever seen anything like that? No, but it looks like a dog. It does look like a dog. You're right. But you know what? It's not a dog. It's a coyote. 
and we do have coyotes around here. A lot of people have never seen a coyote. They don't even know that they're living around. They're in their backyards, hiding in the woods. And the coyote, being very adaptive, has made its way from the southwest United States up towards Virginia. And now we have coyotes. How about this? Do you, you think you know what this is, Christian? No. You don't know? This is a beaver hide. We have beavers that live around here. Beavers have been here for hundreds of years. The Indians used to trap them, settlers trapped them, and uh, they build dams, which is very good for our, our wildlife because they, they uh, build a dam, they cut down a lot of trees, which creates problems for homeowners though. So, um, but the ponds create habitat for different types of wildlife. So the beavers are actually good. We also have this animal that lives here in Prince William. Think you know what that is? It's a raccoon. Definitely, raccoon. Raccoons are omnivorous. They'll eat any kind of food. They, um, they have a real nice pelt too. And uh, the only problem with raccoons is some of them do have rabies. So you have to be careful if you ever see a raccoon. They, they're very brave too. They'll come right up on your decks and they'll eat your cat food and your dog food and your, and your trash and stuff like we that. We have ducks and waterfowl in the parks too. Do you, you see much ducks and geese flying around? Yes. Do you? Cool, yeah. They're everywhere. These are actually wood ducks. This is a, a hen and a drake wood duck. We have them. They live on ponds. They eat um, aquatic vegetation. You can count each one of these rings, and that'll say how old the tree is. This tree has over 100 rings, and so this tree is 100 years old. Well, that's just a little bit of a science in the park demonstration that we have for today. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Did you have a good time today? Yes. And all right. This now concludes Science in the Park.